Hello and welcome to another episode of the Woolly Mastodon Creates Podcast, episode 53. My name is Tori or Victoria, the mastermind behind the crazy, and thank you for joining me today. Uh, before we hop into the episode today, which will probably be a long one, uh, you can find me on a few places on the interwebs. You can find me on Instagram as Tori Schaffner. I'm normally most active there, although I realized last night I never even posted last podcast little picture up on Instagram, so it's been a while since I posted there. You can find me on Facebook. I'm not very active there. Less than Instagram. You can find me on Ravelry as Lil Westy, L-I-L Westy, and all the show notes for the blog are, or all the show notes for the podcast are on the blog, woollymastodon.wordpress.com, and of course you can find me here on YouTube. Uh, today is, I realized this after I hit record, it is September 11th, so take a moment to remember all those who lost their lives on 9-11 all those years ago. Um, yeah, so just a somber moment. I may not even publish this until tomorrow just to, to do that, but just to keep everyone in your prayers. Um, and remember, let's see, got really sidetracked when I remembered that today, but I do have a lot to share this week. Um, one of them I am wearing, which I'll get to in a moment. I might put that off for a few minutes. I may melt during this episode. It is supposed to get up to 90 today. It's still only in the 80s, um, so hopefully it doesn't, but it is liable to get in the 90s today. So fingers crossed I don't melt during this episode. We shall see. Uh, but I do have some finished objects to share, so that's super exciting. I haven't had finished objects to share in a while. So we're going to jump into that. Um, and I'm going to start with, oh, I've got a bunch of stuff in this basket here. Uh, let's see. <laughs> so my first finished objects, I don't even have all of them here. So you may remember last episode I was talking about how I was kind of ready for fall, but I'm not fully ready for fall. Also, I apologize if you can hear the music. My neighbor started playing loud music since nine this morning which is actually good for him he normally plays until 1 a.m at night and then starts at like five or six in the morning so loud music it is i apologize if you can hear the bass but i couldn't wait anymore um to podcast but i had mentioned that i was kind of ready for fall not fully ready for fall although in the past couple of weeks i think i'm really starting to get ready for fall because i'm sick of 90 degree days but i thought i was going to knit myself some pumpkins um i did that and I only have three of them here. I knit five. <laughs> so I started off with this little guy. Uh, this is the pumpkin by it's E V V A S H, and I, I think it's just like an abbreviated name on Ravelry. It's a free pattern, super easy. I used all stash yarn, and I just matched my needle size according to the yarn I was using. So I cast on whatever the pattern said for all of these. So this is the same pattern but then I just adjusted it according to the size of the pumpkin. So I started with this little guy. Um, he's super cute. There's actually a second one of these that I knit and it's at my desk at work. So I knit two of these. I also knit two of these. I know this is, the body is knit out of Karen Simply Soft on this one. And then this is just miscellaneous acrylic yarn for the little stem. I didn't use any pattern. I used, I just knit an I-cord for the little stem. I'm so sorry if you hear that bass. It's getting louder. Um, but I knit an I-cord for the all of the stems. I didn't have cinnamon sticks and I wasn't about to go buy them and I kind of wanted them to just be completely soft. So I did that one. Uh, I believe this is Lion Brand Homespun? Hand? Homespun? Is that what it's called? I don't remember. I knit two of these as well, and then the stem's actually two miscellaneous acrylic brown yarns held together, held double for a thicker stem. So I did two of these. I have one of these at work as well, with this little guy. And then last but not least, this is my by far my favorite. I think the tag's over there. I don't remember. Uh, I don't know. I think this was like Bernat Viva or something, but I only had one skein. And I never knew what I was going to do with it. And when I was going through my stash, I'm like, that would be the perfect fall pumpkin. I'm so glad I thought that. I have hardly any left. So it was, I maybe could have done a little bit more on this and used it up, but I didn't think about it. I didn't know how much I'd need. 
but it made my absolute favorite pumpkin. So I only could make one of these. I only had one skein, and I don't even know if this yarn exists anymore, but it's so pretty. And then again, I held double two different worsted weight yarns for the stem in an I-cord. Yeah, this is my absolute favorite one. I love this one so much. It is so great. So yeah, I made five pumpkins over the span of three days. I started Saturday, I knit two or three, no I think I knit two, Sunday I knit two more, and then Monday I knit the last one, so yeah. I have two pumpkins at work, and then three of them here, and they're so squishy and soft, I really love them. And I always have fiber fill on hand, so this was just all stash that I had. So I made those. A uh, second finished object, not to be outdone. Uh, <laughs> I finished dad socks uh, so I finally finished these socks for a knit for my dad uh, so these are knit out of the black is knit picks stroll and it's just in color black and then the feet are the, the main part of the sock is knit out of yarn be authentic hand dye total hazel, tonal hazel basil and you can kind of see all the different speckles and stuff. Hopefully it'll refocus on my face after that. We'll see. I've noticed it sometimes gets really discombobulated lately. But I finished the pair of socks. Um, I decided to just knit the heels last weekend. We didn't go anywhere. It was Memorial Memorial Day? Labor Day? Labor Day? I get the, I get the two mixed up. It was a three-day weekend <laughs> and I spent a good part of it knitting. So I finished knitting these socks. Oh, I can check on here. Labor Day. Labor Day. <laughs> Got my calendar over there. But I decided to just put the heels in because that's all that was left at home because it's kind of hard to put the heels and start and stop and everything. It like, I all I had to do was Kitchener, Kitchener one of them, and it sat like that for a week because I wasn't going to do that at work. So I finished these socks. They're super pretty. They're super soft and squishy, and I hope they'll be really warm. And finished a pair of socks. Last but not least, finished object is this sweater. Unfortunately, I apologize if there's like a, a like a line down the center. It's not a seam. It's literally just I folded it after I finished blocking it and apparently it maybe wasn't completely dry. I'm sorry, I keep stopping because I hear the base. Um, so there's just like a fold line down the center, but it's fine. I'm not too worried about it. But this is Pink Velvet by Andrea Mowry. Um, I did take some photos, so hopefully those turned out, in which case I'll put some in while I'm talking about it. Uh, this was knit out of Knit Picks Hawthorne Tonal, I believe, or it was a hand paint. Knit Picks Hawthorne hand paint. Uh, the body of the color, the turquoise, is Poseidon, and then the like lime green color work detail is Cattail. And I had five skeins and then I had like a little extra for because I didn't realize I actually had some of this but it was older. Um, I only used four skeins and then the skein of cattail. So four skeins of the Poseidon and then half of a skein of cattail and this is all I had left from those four skeins. So I didn't even have to bust into that fifth skein. So that's back in my stash. So which I'm not complaining about because I love this color. Um, so, this is all I had left. Uh, I basically knit this to pattern except that they want you to use a mohair for the color work, which I didn't because expensive and I didn't know if I'd like it. Um, I did decrease the sleeves more than it said you should because I didn't like how wide the sleeves were going to end up being. And then I knit it so that once I blocked it, it comes to right about here, which is perfect for me because I can pull it over my hands if I want to, or I can push the sleeves up. And then hopefully you'll see in the photos, I'm not going to stand up because it would look awkward. Um, but I have it. It's not a crop. It's not like a really, really long sweater either. It does. I can't like pull it down to cover my entire butt, but I wanted something a little more, not as long, not as baggy so I can wear it to work. So my color work's not perfect. There are some puckers and everything in the color work after I blocked it, but it's not bad. So I am very proud of how this turned out because I've never knit a color work sweater before. So I love this. I want to knit 
like 20 more colorwork sweaters. I have a few in my queue that I definitely want to start. Well, I have the yarn for one, the Throwover by Andrea Maury. And then there's another one. I think it's called Pepperomia. I don't remember. But it's a very, very beautiful sweater with colorwork. But I don't have the yarn for that. So eventually I will knit that. But I absolutely love this. Uh, the only mod I made other than making it not a cropped sweater is this neckline for whatever reason was really really wide. It's still pretty wide but it was really wide after I blocked it. So I was on Instagram and somebody was doing like a finishing detail on the seams of a sweater and she was doing a slip stitch or a single crochet to like make a nice seam detail. And I thought I could do that but on the inside and like kind of pull in this neckline a little bit so that the ribbing doesn't stretch. So I did that. On the, on the inside at the very top I used some of this yarn and I did like a slip stitch all the way around the top so that it doesn't pucker but it also doesn't stretch as much. And you maybe can tell that I did that in the rest of the body because it's like a little held in. But like I love the sweater so much. I keep just wanting to put it on and wear it even though it's so hot and just like stand in the AC and wear it because I really want to wear this sweater. I'm so proud of it. This is probably hands down, well, this is hands down my favorite sweater that I'm in to date. So I'm really proud of this. Really like it. It took me a, just over a month to knit when I checked Ravelry. So I busted through this sweater. Well, a little over a month. Maybe closer to two months. I don't remember. It didn't take me as long as I thought it did, so that was really exciting. Um, so that is, this is my last but not least, this is my last work uh, finished object. So have a bunch of things to show this time. Uh, so then we'll move into works in progress. I've been working on my granny stripe blanket, of course, um, on and off. Not a lot because it's been really warm, so not a lot. But I've been working on that. Uh, let's see. I have made progress. Excuse me, let me grab this box. I have made progress on my granny square blanket. So this past weekend I realized I had enough squares to make the size blanket I wanted. I laid them out on the bed. Got them in the spin. And then I kind of labeled everything and I've started assembling them into strips. So these don't look perfect. They'll even out a little bit when they're all together and then I'll put a border on it. I think you're seeing the back. Yeah. Um, but basically I'm using this uh, medium time. I did have to go out and buy some red heart in a green for the border because I didn't have anything in my stash that would actually work in any quantity that would work. So I bought a bunch of skeins of this and then I've just been attaching them. I have one strip done and then this box is completely full of like my crochet hook and all my other squares that I need to attach. So it is on its way. It's going to be more like a lap blanket or like a decorative blanket, but I think it'll be really cute. So I have made a decent amount of progress. I finished crocheting all the squares and then I laid them out into little bundles. So each bundle is laid out and then labeled which row it is and from top to bottom. And then I will crochet the borders and crochet them together. And then I'll just kind of update you as the progress goes because this is a big project, but I am making strides. I'm to the point where making the strips isn't going to be warm, but it's going to be really warm when I start joining the strips. So if it stays hot for a while, this might have to go on hold, but there is that. Uh, my second work in progress, where did I put it? Oh, here it is. Oh, and I should also show, look how much yarn I had left from Dead Socks going in the blanket. It's a lot. I could probably use it for something else, but I'm going to put in the blanket because I don't have anything this color in there. Um, but next, of course I cast on another pair of socks and I cast it on with leftovers. So I'm doing heels and just cuffs, or no, toes and cuffs in this. I'm not going to do heels in cattail from my sweater. And then I had used, I had a skein of this Poseidon in my stash already, and I had used a little bit of it. I had skeined, caked it up to use for the edging on my um, Sashui shawl shrug, that really big neon shawl shrug. And I had used this for the edging. So it was already caked up, 
and I decided, you know what, I've added a full skein to my stash, I can use it in a shawl or whatever, I'm going to cast on some socks. So I cast these on like Sunday, I've been knitting on these at work, so I've been getting a lot of knitting done, and um, yeah, I'm really enjoying this. I'll have matching socks, like blend right into my sweater, I'll have matching socks to go with my sweater, not intentionally, but... I just love these colors, so I figured I just need to do this, and then the leftovers from this will probably go in my blanket. Uh, but yeah, I decided to cast on. These are probably gonna. I'm gonna attempt to make a pair of shorty socks, but uh, there's someone I follow online who just does like a toe-up sock, puts it in afterthought heel, and then puts like the tiniest little bit of a cuff in top above the heel section. So I'm gonna try that and see if that works for shorty socks. I may even go down to a size zero needle <laughs> cut the ribbing to make sure it's tighter <sighs> I knit all my socks on US 1 1.25 millimeters because I'm a very loose knitter uh, a lot of people can knit on a larger needle than I can but in order to keep these tight I have to be a one US 1 needle so if I want anything smaller I'll have to go down to my zeros which oh, it hurts but it'll be fine but I cast on the sock and I've gotten quite a ways so I always have to have a sock project on the needles. That is my another work in progress. I have one more. I am on a sweater kick. I was checking on Ravelry last night to see how many sweaters I've knit in about the last two years. Uh, if you include the fact that I knit and then re-knit Tegna, or Tegna um, by I think it's Caitlin Hunter, I've knit seven sweaters in the past two years <laughs> and it doesn't feel like that considering then over all the years that I've named before that I've only knit a couple successfully like two a vest and a sweater that's all I had knit successfully before these past two years and all of a sudden I'm just like knitting all of the sweaters apparently I've just kind of figured it out so yeah when I realized how many sweaters I knit and how much I love wearing the sweaters I knit um, I decided to cast on another one. So this sweater will end up being the Weekender Light, and because of the yarn I'm knitting it out of, it might just be more of a at-home sweater, because for whatever reason, several years ago, I bought a sweater quantity of this, I think it's Stroll, is this hand paint? Yeah, Stroll Fingering Hand Paint in the color Renaissance. And I was like, oh, this is so cool, it'll look like a painting, blah, 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 blah. And I bought a sweater quantity. But, here, this one's not attached to any yarn right now because of how you knit it. Um, it's going to be absolutely bonkers. So I am knitting The Weekender Light by Andrea Mowry. I'm knitting this on a US 1, 1.25 millimeter needle, and then the body will be a US 3. 3.25 millimeter, ne millimeter needle. I actually have sk six skeins of this because I had bought one skein um, in a different lot and then f a year later I bought a sweater quantity. Um, and I'm going to save that one. If I absolutely have to break into it, I will because it's a different dye lot. But this is what it's looking like right now. It's going to be an absolutely crazy sweater. So the Weekender Light is doesn't have a whole lot of details on it, which... I didn't want to knit something completely plain. I kind of wanted something with little details, so it's got like a split hem and a few things. But I mean, this is going to be bonkers. This sweater is going to be crazy. And <laughs> I don't know if I'll regret this, but I decided, you know what? I have a sweater quantity of this. I'm on a sweater knitting kit at Kick. I'm going to knit it up. If I love the sweater design, I'll knit it again in a different color, in a more solid color. But I'm going to knit this up because I have the yarn and I've been on a sweater knitting kick and I have one other actual sweater quantity and then that's it. So I've been working through them. So I, this is, I don't have much started. I have this and then I've started the second panel um, for the front and back. But that's all I have on this. But Weekender Light by Andrea Maori. It's a super cute pattern. It's supposed to be really oversized. I'm not knitting it super oversized. I'm knitting about the same size that I knit this in, so this is slightly oversized, but not like 10 inches of positive ease bag oversized, because I'm just not into that. But some people can pull it off. I don't think I can. But I really like it. I started knitting on this. Um, 
on and off. I started this weekend and we'll see where it goes. So another sweater on the needles. And I don't have a picture of it right now, but uh, hopefully, because when I print the pattern, oh, I have a partial picture that doesn't show. Yeah, my printer, if I don't turn it to high quality, um, it does a weird, a weird thing. So if I close off that, you can kind of see what the sweater looks like. Barely. But, yeah. My printer just gets angry if I don't have it set on high quality. And why would I do that when I'm just mainly printing text? Which I don't need it for. But, I cast on another sweater. Um, so that's the end of... There's like fur in my nose. Probably midnight fur. That's the end of my works in progress. And my finished objects. So, I, But I still have things to show. Um, I actually have some stash enhancements. I do. I know. What's going on? We'll start with the first one, which is actually a gift from a friend. And let's see. It's Crystal Lake Alpaca Farm and Boutique is where I came from. Uh, let's see. It's from in Michigan, downstate Michigan. And this is a... This is from the alpaca named Fiona. Uh, Surrey Llama Alpaca Blend is the yarn. It's 250 yards of worsted weight two ply. And it is the... Oh yeah, it smells so good. This is just like the softest... I wonder if this is actually hand spun even. This might be hand spun. I don't know. It's beautiful. It is absolutely gorgeous. It is so soft. It is just like... Oh. I want to sleep with this just like right next to me as a pillow. It's so soft, so thank you. You know who you are who bought this. If you bought, watch this, I don't think you do, but thank you. I love this. I honestly am not sure what I'm going to knit with this because it's so precious to me right now. Like, this is from an alpaca farm in Michigan, and I'm just like, <laughs> not worthy. Uh, but I don't know what I'm going to knit with this yet, but I'm thinking, I wonder if I can get mittens out of this hat or mittens or just I don't know I'm probably gonna sit on this for a while because I do that with my precious skeins of yarn and I probably will but I love this so much I'm so excited it's so soft and it's just this beautiful brown just like the natural alpaca oh it's so nice I wish you could feel this right now it's so soft but so I got that <laughs> and then we went, uh, my friends came from uh, downstate Michigan to visit. Um, I live th near Madison, essentially, and then my other friends live also near Madison. And we all decided that as a group activity, we were going to the Bristol Renaissance Fair, which is near this, it basically in Kenosha, Wisconsin. And it's like a permanent rent fair. They go for about a month every year. I've never been to a renaissance fair before. Uh, it was a really cool experience. It was really, really hot. And I'll talk about that more in life lately. But it was a really cool experience and I would 100% go back. It was so fun. To all the people that dressed up, hats off to you. I would have died, but it was really, really fun. But at the very end of the day when things were kind of winding down and we were about ready to head out, <laughs> my friend found a yarn shop. Of course she did. Um, I think it's the Deckled Edge. Uh, she has a website too. So I actually picked up, she just had some like wooden bamboo needles, so I picked up a couple just notions. Uh, these are, I thought it was printed on the handle somewhere, four millimeter straight needles. And then somewhere in here there's a crochet hook. Uh, the crochet hook is a seven millimeter just because that's a harder size to find. So I got a beautiful, beautiful like wood bamboo crochet hook. Then she had, oh, I've got the mat from the renter in here still, eh, on the parking ticket. <laughs> um, she had this, what is it? Highland wool, they're 220 yards per skein, and the color name is Cochineal. And I got all four skeins that she had in this like lavender color. And it's so pretty. It's got like these black, the, the yarn itself is spun so it has some black flecks through it. And I was going to get a bunch of colors and I'm like, this is dumb. I got all four colors in one, like all four colors, all four in one color, I should say. 
because then I can do something a little bigger with it. So I got this from the Ren Fair, and it's absolutely scrumptious. I love this yarn. It smells good too. It's so soft. And she has so much gorgeous stuff in her like little stall, vendor stall. Um, it's basically buildings that people, I guess, rent out, vendors rent out, and then they dress up in the Renaissance garb. And her, her area, her little building was fantastic. It was so cute. But, oh, I love it. I love it. Of course they'd have a yarn shop at a rent fair. I didn't even think of it. And my husband didn't end up going. Um, but he was just like, yeah, I figured they would. And like, I didn't, it didn't even cross my mind that it could be a thing. So, yeah. I got this. So, it's so cute. So, so cute. So, that was my stash enhancements. I actually have yarn. I got yarn. It was great. <laughs> very happy. Very, very happy with that. He started music again. But anyway, stash enhancements. Um, yeah, I got yarn. None that loves. I do have a few things. You've basically seen them. I've, you know, I've, I got ended up getting this basket, which I'm absolutely loving. I actually have, like, warm clothes in my closet in there right now that I've gotten more recently that I can't wear because it's too hot and I'm very sad, but I've been using this for knitting stuff too. So I got a basket, I got that blue bin, um, but we kind of, yeah, it was just a, just a few things here and there, um, like from the Ren Fair. I did get some earrings that I really think are really cute. I didn't put them in today because I didn't think about it, but we got a few things here and there, non knit loves, just, just storage and random trinkets. <laughs> um, I don't have any spinning or sewing, didn't do anything of that. Uh, upcoming knits, I do want to cast on a shawl and I need to figure out Christmas knitting. I need to figure out if this year I am again sending something in the mail. Because if I'm mailing everybody something in a card, it has to be tiny and it has to be mailable. And I did snowflakes last year. So I have to figure that out. No, no idea what I'm going to do. Absolutely no idea. Uh, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see what I can figure out. Um, so if you have any suggestions on that matter, just let me know. Help a girl out because I don't have any ideas right now of something that I could easily put in a card because a lot of the people now that I would give these things to don't live close by so I can't just give it to them. <laughs> so thoughts, suggestions, let me know. Um, Life Lately. So anyway, Life Lately, we're just going to move into that. Uh, I went to my first run fair. It was super fun. Um, almost got heat stroke. <laughs> so I only got to watch half the jousting because it was just way too hot in the sun. So I had to go bail in the shade and chug water while the other people watched for a while. Then they bailed too because it was so hot. Uh, but I wasn't too mad about that because I've actually, fun fact, when I was in, was that high school? Yeah, when I was in high school, our band went to Chicago, and we went to med medieval times. So I've technically seen stuff like that anyway, and it's really cool. I'm sad I missed part of it, but I was just too warm. I couldn't enjoy it. So we we did that, um, visited all the stalls. Um, one of my friends purchased, like, a short sword, I think. That's, I don't know what it officially was, but it was really cool. Um... Everybody was dressed up really cool. All the people that work at the fair, I felt so bad for because it was in the 90s. It was so hot. So we ended up not really getting any of the food. We got like Italian ice and a few other things, but we didn't get partake in any of the food because we were just chugging water because it was too hot. So everybody was like, we want to go back someday, but try to pick a cooler day so we can actually like get the food and enjoy the food and not die. Um, but it was it was so much fun. It was so much fun. We spent the entire day there. It was absolutely great. I love it. I've got a couple shirts from there that I can wear when it cools off because of course I'm kind of getting long sleeve shirts at laces because I've learned that's what I wear. Um, but it was it was a great experience. 100% loved it. Highly recommend if anyone ever gets the chance. If you're into something like that, if you're into fantasy and medieval and everything, 100% go. You don't have to dress up. None of us did. Well, one person did and he was melting, but none of us really did. We were all the tank tops and shorts or whatever, just to like not die. Um, and it was really fun. Uh, other than that, 
Oh, uh, well, last weekend was the long weekend, so I did a ton of knitting. I think I'm getting my knitting mojo back a little bit, not 100%, but just whenever it feels like it's slightly cooling down to the 70s or that rare, rare, rare day where it's the 60s for part of the day, um, then I really, really want to knit. So I think as the weather cools, I'll be doing more knitting, even though I did a lot of knitting in the last week. Um, I'm trying to think really much else other than no I'm just ready for fall I'm ready for fall I'm like scheming getting out the few fall decorations I have which consists of like a couple ceramic pumpkins and a wreath and putting those up <laughs> because I'm ready for it to be cool a little cooler I'm not ready for it to be like deep fall borderline winter I'm just ready for that point in summer where it starts to tail off and starts to get cooler in the evenings and you can like drink a cup of tea and lay under a blanket. Then the during the day is 60, 70 and you know, that kind of thing. So I don't know. I think with that I will leave you be. I'm rambling. It'll probably be another, this will probably be an every three week thing again for the next podcast just because of stuff that's coming up in the next couple weeks. Um, but we'll see what happens. I'm hoping to get more knitting going so that I can do every other weekend again. So we'll see. Uh, but yeah, with that, a uh, reminder of where you can find me on the integra intergrams, interwebs, or internet, whatever you prefer. <laughs> you can find me on Instagram as Tori Schaffner. You can find me on Ravelry as Lil Westy. I am on Facebook, just not as active there. Show notes are on the blog at woollymastodon.wordpress.com. Of course, you can find me here on YouTube. If you like the episode, please like the video, subscribe, share this video, this channel and this video with your friends because we'd love to grow this little community here. And with that, I hope you have a wonderful couple weeks ahead and I'll see you in my next episode. Bye.